Welcome, everybody, to another episode of A Conversation With here on the Severe MMA YouTube page. I'm your host, E. Spencer Kite, joined this week by a man that wears many hats. He is a fighter, a father, a coach, a husband, an entrepreneur, a UFC vet, a business owner. He is Elliot Marshall. My man, thank you for doing this. My dude, how are you? Thanks for having me on. I'm well. This is this has been a little bit, a little bit of time coming. You and I have gotten together to do some coach conversations for the UFC mm -hmm. website. Shameless plug number one. Do it. And just made sense to to bring you on here to to get a little bit more of the story. The purpose of this show is to kind of a little bit like like your show. I didn't mention in there, podcaster as well. Yeah. The blueprint, formerly the Gospel of Fire. Yeah. Where you dive in and and learn a little bit more about your guests. That's the point of this. But it starts the same way every episode and that is elliot marshall when did you fall in love with combat sports oh god i fell in love with combat sports when i was six years old i saw uh the karate kid uh the 1986 version of the karate kid okay and he did the crane kick and i like kicked the lamp in my house and my parents were like okay let's go and then it's been uh man you you named all of the things that i'm good at in the world and i'm good at nothing else like I can cook a good steak. Okay. Hold on. I'll okay. That, that I was, can, I think that was the one yeah. thing that I left. It's, it's right. on the Twitter of barbecuer. Yeah. And I know yeah. yourself and Eric Nixick often mm -hmm. share photos back and forth and IG mm -hmm. reels back and forth of your trigger, trigger grill action. Yes. And so we may, we may even get into that at some point. Yes. So I, 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 I but other than that, like I just stay in my lane of like what I try to be good at. It sounded like, like when you, when you made said all these things about me, uh, like I do a lot, but they're all in like four lanes and that's it. It's a good way to attack things. It's a thing I'm trying to learn and, and trying, and I've, I've really tried to bring even just to the professional side of things of, yeah. there's a couple of things I'm good at. Well, Outside I think of that. I'm out. things, yeah. I think this is one of the biggest things that we, that we mess up a little bit is we try to be just good at everything. Um, right. I just know I'm not. Yeah. Like I've I can't, come, I can't I've fix my to toilet. That. Yeah. Right. I can't fix my toilet. If, if a GFI goes out. Yeah. I, nope. Uh, car problems. Nope. I have friends that like shake their head at me that I don't own power tools that I can't do some of this stuff. I have a buddy locally that works in construction, does drywall for a living. And I mean, we had them over to hang curtain rods and they're like, you can't hang a curtain rod. I'm like, nope. I, I, I probably can. It might be crooked. And do you know how I know it's not going to be? I'm going to call the guy that does this kind of stuff professionally and has all the gear and can come over and do it. And, actually and I can give him a case it. of beer and we're good. Yeah. And loves it. Right. And loves doing it. Because, because I don't think like martial arts is that special or, or, you know, or like whatever. It's my thing. Right. Right. right? It's my thing. Uh, is it cool? Yeah. But I mean, like. Anybody makes an argument of why their thing is cool and why the other people, why other people, you can always make this argument. Right. Like for me, it's the greatest thing in the world. Uh, for my kids, it's not my kids. It's basketball. So I gotta, I gotta deal with that. Uh, but if I try to like do other things that other people think are cool and I just don't, and I'm not that good at it. Uh, we have, you know, we have this story, homie, uh, about this side table, like my wife, <laughs> asked me to build a side table in the, con in the first condo we ever owned. And she came back and like, I think she like put a drink on it and it just like fell apart. And, and she's like, God damn it. You can't even build a side table. And this is when I was not successful, right? I had not had right. any success right. at anything yet. So it really pissed her off. <laughs> right? right. It's like, but, wait a minute. What have, yeah. what have I signed up for here? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's chasing this dream. That we don't know how it's going to go. He hasn't done anything with it yet, really. Yep. yep. And he may not even be. He can't even do of, basic household can't even, chores. Can't even follow IKEA instructions. Right. And this was before I could cook, right? So I had no money. I couldn't cook. Uh, 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 you know, I could do my good, own laundry, good look, but not Good well. looking and chasing a dream. Yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, we can question the good looking, chasing a dream for sure. So what was it about the Karate Kid that just resonate because you and i are are relatively the same age i'm 44 you're 42 mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. have the same sort of origin story of like early martial arts films saw it and was just like okay this is oh. i want to be a ninja i don't know everyone wants to be a badass right who doesn't want to be a badass 
And that led to, so what's the step? See the karate oh, kid. Okay. Kick See the, the karate kid. Kick the sign lamp. Up, kick the lamp. Get put in karate. Okay. Uh, fit in. No. I mean, you want the, like, you want the sad story. Here's the sad story. Uh, fit in absolutely nowhere in my life because my dad, uh, so I have a black dad and my mom is Jewish. And first of all, no one really did that in 1980, like a black, a white Jewish lady and a black guy. And then you have to have the Holocaust survivor grandparents who survived the concentration camps. So I had a very interesting experience. Uh, we moved to a town when I was eight years old that let us know about this very interesting experience that we were by constantly vandalizing our house, uh, swastikas and not, hey, the first time Nigers go home, they, they fucked up the spelling. Uh, so uh, they, they got it right later on, you know, but I fit in nowhere, right? Okay. Like I fit in absolutely nowhere except this karate school that I was going to. Okay. So, okay, I'll just stay here. Right. And I'll keep doing this and keep doing this. I have no friends. High school, middle school is terrible. High school, worse. Um, I blocked like I mean, this is how bad my parents was. And I think I blocked this out. I just remember this story recently. Um, the girls were the girls in middle school made a list of the least likely boy that you would kiss, the ugliest boy. The teacher got a hold of the list. If you were that teacher, Spence, and you saw it, it's got a title on it and names list on it. What would you do with the list? We're going to the principal. We're talking to the parents. We're talking to the students. We're 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 solving the hang problem it on the that fucking is here. Board. Would you hang it on the board to show not to not to make lists of people so that everybody that walked in the room from now on saw Elliot Marshall's name at the top of this list. No, you wouldn't do that, but that's what she did. So, you know, so this, this, that just sums up my experience, okay. you know, like, like that's how it rolled for me. Uh, until my senior year. Okay. And in my senior year of high school, in between my junior and senior year of actually in between my junior and senior year of high school, uh, the national tournament for the style of karate that I was doing, and I was a big deal at the karate school. Now I was teaching. I was like a third degree black belt, main head instructor underneath the owner, right? Like all of that jazz. So, uh, the national tournament was in my area, right? Like thirty minutes up the road or something. They were holding it there, and my friends. One of my friends, one of my good friends, he was older than me. His name is John Hassett. Uh, he actually owns a, a jiu-jitsu school now, a couple of them. He went to like the master's division. He did the master's division. And I was like, and you got to remember, this is point sparring karate. So you fought your friends all the time. It didn't matter. Uh, I was like, I care. Uh, curse. Can I curse? Oh, of course. Okay. I was like, you scared pussy. You know, uh, he was like, oh, you think I'm scared? He's like, yeah, come over to my house next Friday. I have no clue that he's doing jujitsu. It's 1997 and he mops the fucking floor with me, right? <laughs> Just smashes me. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to learn this. I, I need to learn this thing. Person. Yeah. Right. You know, so you got to remember 97 early, 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 right? So UFC's banned at this point. Uh, so I go home, I rent all the C, you know, block video thing that these guys won't know what that is. Uh, so I ran, I, the UFCs, I watch them and then he starts teaching me some of this jujitsu stuff. And I couldn't learn it really well because uh, the, the closest school was Philadelphia, which was 45 minutes away from me because it wasn't like it is now where there's like a jujitsu school in every corner. Uh, I go back to school. I still have no friends. I start talking about this jujitsu stuff explaining it a little bit some wrestlers hear about it some state champion wrestlers hear about it and they challenge me well i beat them and then all of a sudden oh my god elliot beat up these kids right the cool kids so elliot starts to become what a cool kid you know right so and in that moment i connect hitting and winning with my safety. And how do I connect it with my safety? Let me explain that piece. 
my grandparents, who are Holocaust survivors, they always said, Elliot, you need friends that will hide you from the Nazis. Okay, that you need money and friends. <coughs> a couple, right? So 17 years old, I've got no money. <coughs> Excuse me, that's not my responsibility yet. Um, and the one part that is my responsibility is to have friends I got none of. Well, oh my God, all of a sudden people start to like me. So now I'm like, okay, I'm going to get really good at fighting and I'm going to fight in the UFC. And I fight in the UFC. That will one, provide money because I'll be a champion. And that will two, provide a lot of friends because people will like me because I'm the champion. And therefore, when Hitler comes again, because that was ingrained in my upbringing. Right. Hitler this is going to happen again. again. Yes. Okay. And you need to be prepared. Uh, so now I'm good. Right. So when you look at fighting, uh, most people fight for fame and money. Right. I'm not fighting for fame and money. I'm fighting for safety, security, and uh, running from Hitler. That's a, that's a way, way lower, like, base level reason to fight. Right. And that's why I fought like shit. I mean, we'll, we'll get into whether sure. you fought like shit or not later. Because yeah. I know this is a, a recurring theme with you of like, yeah, and mm -hmm. I was no good. And the guest often goes, yeah, but you fought in the UFC. And you go, yeah, but lots of people fight in the UFC. Not, I'm not that good. Look, I won't, I won't say I was no good. I'm going to whoop everyone's ass that doesn't know how to fight, right? <laughs> like, that's what we're not talking about, okay? Okay. Like, if All you right. don't know as how to fight, as, you're okay. fucked. As long as, okay? as long as we're getting that part settled, as long and, as we're getting and, that part squared away. And I'll whoop most people's ass that do know how to fight. Right. Okay? Not now. I'm 43 years old. Okay? So, uh, but yeah, like we're, we're, I'm not saying that, but we're, we're talking about, uh, I, for me, to say you're good, you know, to, that you are a good fighter, uh, Izzy, uh, Anderson, George, Nate Diaz is a great fighter. Masvidal is a great fighter. Uh, Masvidal is a good fighter. Masvidal is not a great fighter. Agreed. And we can, we can go back on this. If, you know, we can go back and forth on this. Masvidal had an amazing year. Right. Okay. In 2019, that sent him to superstardom. Caught and, lightning in a bottle perfectly. Yep. And to <clears> me is... We talked about it. My partner and I, Harry, Harry Powell taped our show, the takeaways uh -huh. this morning and basically said, Masvidal is, is an absolute overachiever that caught lightning in a bottle perfectly was a critical mm -hmm. darling for a long time. Yep. Those that know, know how good he is, but he was never meant to be and never was going to be a UFC champion, UFC contender Not close. until that year, but he wasn't and then he close took either. that year and it was just off to the race. Hold, hold on. He beat Askren. Right, yep. and then he beat Nate Diaz, and then and Nate Diaz was was done. Nate Diaz was fighting before me, right? And uh, yeah, I don't, he, I don't really like timed, Ben Askren. Ben Askren well. sucks, right? Like Ben Askren, once he came to the UFC, he he was not a good fighter. You know, he, I don't even think he beat Robbie Lawler. He, in no. my opinion, he won zero fights in the UFC. Agreed. Uh, so, yeah, uh, who did he beat? After that, after Nate, no, one. after Nate, no one, no one. And Nate was done. Nate, Nate, Nate hasn't won in a, you know, in a grip. Right. Uh, Nate, Nate beat Pettis, didn't he? He beat Tony, beat Tony Ferguson last September. Oh yes. He beat, but, Ferg right. He beat, he beat these other old guys. Yes. Right. And kudos to these old guys. Like I'm not Pettis champion, Ferguson champion, like great job, like phenomenal fighters. Right. But everyone's kind of old now, right? So, right. But yeah, so I mean, he had an amazing year, an amazing year, Jorge Masvidal. He right. he is what I would say is a step above me, of where I was. All right. So, let's just pick up here then, yeah. Because you made the decision at a relatively young age, mm -hmm. compared to a lot of your contemporaries. Yep. Two two losses after you get called back. Mm -hmm. on short notice essentially oh, of like okay. raise your hand i'm gonna come back and you go you know what everybody knows when it's time to call it for themselves i'm calling it how did you make that decision what was the process for you of now's the time for me to walk away because we see lots of people yeah that it's the constant chase Millions it's the no no i'm i'm <laughs> just one more little win mm -hmm. if i if i tweak this i get back to where i want to be and you went time to do something else mm -hmm. how'd you get Mill there? millions of champions and neither one was in the was in the realm 
you know, 30, 30, 40 grand wasn't cutting it. Right. And so it was a, it was a strictly, I'm not doing this for the number. I'm not good enough. Like you have to be able to have a true assessment of yourself. Right. I'm not good enough for A, B, C, D, whatever. Like I could be good enough in practice. You know, I, I could be good enough, but for some, for, for some reason I wasn't good enough on fight night. So if, if you're, you have, and if you can't realize like fighting is the worst thing you can do too long, the <laughs> worst thing, right? Okay. Look, the worst thing that could have happened to me, the absolute is, uh, if I wouldn't have retired, if I would have taken another fight and whoop someone's ass. Right. Cause it gives then you that. Then you're sex. for sure coming. Then you're for sure going to keep going. There's no way you're stopping off whooping someone's ass. There is no one in this whole entire world, homie, that is luckier than me. And the reason I say that is for a whole host of reasons. In the fight game, okay, in the fight game, I'll say it like this. I whooped Brandon Vera's ass in that fight. I whooped his ass in that last round. And then the judges said I lost. So I don't have to go out with this feeling of, oh, my God, I got my ass kicked. I didn't get my ass kicked. I kicked his ass. So that, that doesn't leave me with this. I can't go out this like that feeling. Right. But you like walked away, walked away from the competition side of it. Mm -hmm. Certainly you're still involved and we will get yeah. into, into that stuff, but you walked away completely from the competition side of it. Yeah. For you, was it, I'm not doing this regional circuit stuff. Cause you had been released mm -hmm. and did it and it came back coinciding with it. Mm -hmm. Like the second time did it came back got released again after the, the second straight loss. And you were like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a, I can go and rebuild again on the regional circuit. I was over it. Was it just, man. I, I didn't yeah. lose that fight. Like you're not going to argue with me that I lost that fight to Vera. Like I know it's what it says. Right. Right. And, and I, and I accept that. Right. Like that's exactly what it says. And it's my fault that uh, it is what it like that. I didn't win that fight. I'm not blaming anyone else. Um, right. I had a kid. I had this, I had this house. I had, you know, uh, I had other things. I had other things that were lined up that, that, that I could give more to like, uh, the, that fight was a Saturday night. And that Tuesday I looked at the building that is now the Denver school. So I, I had other things ready, moving and ready to go. And it, and it was just time. So let's pivot to that because it's, it's part of the reason I wanted to bring you on here is, is that I think you more than a lot of people, mapped out mm -hmm. after career mm -hmm. and have absolutely done a tremendous job of here's my second chapter, which is a thing that again, a lot of your contemporaries mm -hmm. struggle with because everybody thinks ah, I'll just open a gym and it's easy mm -hmm. and I've got a name and I can open a gym. It's not easy. Mm -mm. One, you have seven, I believe mm -hmm. part owner of seven facilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did you start mapping out when I retire, I'm going to do these three, four things when that are nine. all still within that lane. Yeah. When I was nine years old, I said, okay. I was going to be a karate Walk teacher. Me through it. I just said, I was going to be a karate teacher for the martial arts teacher for the rest of my life. And then I just did it. Now in between that, I got really good at fighting. And, but I started teaching at, at 13. And I taught and taught and taught. I got real. I sucked at first. I sucked so bad. My karate teacher at the school where I worked and trained, he only let me teach one kid that sucked. Like I was, I was, I was the shitty teacher that go, went and took the shitty student. <laughs> and then I just, I want this to be a Disney movie where you're like, and then that <laughs> shitty student won the state tournament. <laughs> yeah. And I don't we know. Celebrated at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where he is, but, uh, <laughs> and then I just got better. And then I just got better. I became a, I begot, became a better teacher. I learned how to teach. I watched what he did. I listened to everything he said and I did it. And then I, and I copied, you know, and I copied and I copied and I copied. And then, you know, after my career, I always knew after my career that this was what I was going to do. I was going to teach martial arts. Uh, I retired. How Go how ahead. does that connection come together? Because obviously you're a black belt under Amal Easton, mm -hmm. co-owner with Amal of, of Easton Training Centers. I presented an offer. He couldn't, I presented You, you were just he like, hey man, I want it. I want in I'm, on this. I'm going to, I'm going to buy half the business and I'm going to buy the building that we're going to move the school into. And the rent is going to be cheaper 
than the rent at the place that we call the fucking favela, right? Because the favela is the ghetto in, in right. Portuguese, right? Uh, in Brazil. Uh, the rent's going to be cheaper than that. So let's go. And it was just, yep. And then the how papers. can you turn that down? Right. right. And then I worked my ass off to get him back to whole. Right. Like if he was making seven grand before me, when I buy in at 50%, now he's making 3,500, let's say. Right. In profits. Yep. Okay. So that I was like, okay, you got to work your ass off to get him at minimum back to seven grand. Well, we exceeded that. So then I made him the same damn offer for the Boulder school. <laughs> and then five more subsequently have no, come along. No, it, they didn't all work out the same as that, as those two. Okay. But right. those two worked out like that. But you have continued to expand the business mm -hmm. and, and move it forward to where. But then we have, an, okay, so uh, I don't want to. And we don't have to divulge all of the, the business acumen. Oh, business we do. Secret. Look, we have, okay. a, we have a company called Easton Online where anybody who wants to be an affiliate of ours, you don't have to be called Easton, right? You can still keep your Gracie Baja or Alliance School. But you want to learn how we do our practices? Great. Uh, hit, hit your boy up and. We get you set up and we, we give you everything. We give you, we, we don't give you pay, uh, but you get everything of what right. we do. We, I'm, I'm not scared to, to share because if, if I show you a look, it's all on the internet anyway. Right. Like there's no such thing as secrets anymore. Uh, one, <laughs> two, uh, whatever. They'll make me better. I'm not, I'm not scared. Right. So now we have an amazing staff. So I, I, I can't, I can't say that I did this like, you know, Amal and I were the catalysts, let's say, right? And right. Like he started it. I bought in and that was a change. And then we had this other big change in 2017 when we knew we had to grow with, you know, then the GM of the Boulder School, his name is Mike Tusigna. Uh, he was having a kid and he was like, man, this ain't going to sustain me like this. So he presented this offer to us and we were like, okay, we've never told him really no. So, man, we, we just, we went all in on how to run a business. And that's what we do now. You know, that, that is, I got, I got to stop saying, you know, because no, people don't fucking know. Like it's killing me when I listen to myself talk, I say, you know, too much. So sorry for that. You can edit that if you want. No, that's all right. We don't edit. <laughs> we don't okay. edit. I, I don't either. We just roll. Yeah. So, and so that was this other big shift. And, and now like we have an org chart where you can see how you're going to move up in the company, what your roles are, what your responsibilities are a whole host of things, core values, purpose, marketing strategies, C, you know, Mike's the CEO. We have a COO. We have a, a chief marketing operator. Like, yeah, we do it, man. We Full do fledged, it. Top Full to bottom fledged, business. Top to bottom. It's a business. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a business. Pop. It's, it's, we try to do our very best, but look, uh, yep. Uh, we're the shareholders. We're, we're the sole owners of the business. You know, Amal and I, uh, if there's a hundred, let's say a hundred percent, Amal and I probably own 90% of that hundred percent, but yes, that's, but we, gotcha. we have, we have a crew gotcha. we, we have, and, and no one has a better staff than me. So you said earlier that when you started coaching at 13, mm -hmm. you were a terrible coach. Mm -hmm. You got the one bad student. Yeah. You are a phenomenal coach. Now I can say that from seeing you coach, seeing different yeah. things of you along the way. That speaking with some of your students, people that have trained under you, people that train with you currently. I know you're a phenomenal speaking to other coaches. They, they tell me things. How did you get to that point? And for you, what are the core elements that make a successful, effective coach? Can we start with the core elements? Absolutely. My wife actually just asked me this last night. Like we were talking about it in another subject and she goes, and like, I feel bad for like the people that, for example, coach my kids. <laughs> right. I can understand that. Yes. Because I'm, I'm a motherfucker, man. I'm a motherfucker. And, and, and I know what good coaching looks like. Right. And she goes, well, what are your expectations? And I said, I need them to care so much that they're going to die an early death, have high cholesterol, have high blood pressure, maybe have a stroke that at the end of a weekend coaching that they are destroyed physically, emotionally because they gave so much to those people that they were coaching. You have to love it. You have to be doing this for absolutely no money. 
zero because you would choose nothing else because it is what you are here on this world to do and in this world to do. And now when you do that, after that, what you get back will cancel out the high blood pressure and the cholesterol and hopefully will even out your life expectancy. That's are the four you, elements. Are you one of those sports dads? Like, do you go and, and watch the boys hoop? And like get a is so is the coach good? Does the coach meet a de, where does he fall on the degree of We're getting there standard? Look, I fund the damn team. Okay, okay, I'm the right. funder so of that, the team. Yeah. So that so gives that you the a team exists. Of, all right, right. The okay. team, the team exists. So the AAU team is there because of Elliot Marshall Inc. Yes, and so <laughs> Elliot right. Marshall well, not selected. Elliot Marshall Inc. because it's my wife's money too, right? It's personal okay. money. So be, be, Marshall family, Marshall, Marshall family, family LLC. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. They selected the coach, but so the coach understands the mandates. Look, I meet with these guys every week. <laughs> we go over how how I to build this. a business, right? I love this because I'm all in, man. The, and I told you the number the number two the I can't say the number one people, right? Because that's that's an oxymoron with words. But who I'm most all in on is with my kids. Yeah. I don't want to be their basketball coach. I'm their dad. Now I am there to help them develop the mindset, to develop the belief in themselves of how they can accomplish everything and anything that they want to in this world. My vehicle is martial arts. Their vehicle seems to be basketball. So we're going to fucking do it. My kids, it's stupid standardized testing at school this week. Guess who's not going? My kids. Where are they going? Basketball. Fuck standardized testing. There, how old and how I, I, so I listened to nine and 13. It was you, I mean, you and AJ, yeah, Vaynerchuk nine, on the last yeah. episode. And like the big boys already, like they're, they're gonna have some height, they're gonna My have one, some, some future, yeah, they options. have some heights, but they love it. So, what am I like? They know what they love, right? right? If it changes, if it changes to piano, I'll change in a hot second, right? But that's that's for me to figure out, that's for me, you know, right. to be able to c- can talk with them. You know, like my one kid played terrible on Saturdays. This he's really good. My nine year old's really good. He might be like the, you know, he's top five nine year olds in the state, which is silliness to say because who cares about nine year olds? But he's really good. He played terrible on Saturday and he played like he was LeBron James. And I love LeBron. Okay. Complaining on every call. Yeah. yeah. Complaining on every call. (laughs) Like, like, you know, and I'm like, yo, no. You know, so I was like, look, tomorrow, but they had games the next day, right? I was like, tomorrow, I need it to look like this because this is what effort looks like. I didn't say I needed to look like this. I said, can we have some agreements on what our game will look like tomorrow, how we play? You know, I was like, what's your rebounding going to look like? He's like, okay, I'm going to go get rebounds. I was like, how many are you going to shoot for? 10. Great, buddy. Awesome. What's your defense going to look like? What's your passing going to look like? So developing the, the, the other skills and not look, he, he ended up pouring in like 26, but I don't care about that. Right. He had to get 10 rebounds. He, he had to make steals. He had to like, he was not allowed to complain. If he complained, he knew I was going to get the coach to take him out. So I'm a motherfucker. I don't know what I, I am. Yeah, for sure. But we're going to chase greatness. I don't care what, like I said, to you, I don't care what it's at. We're going to chase it. So I want to, I want to drill down on that piece Mm because that's a piece that not a lot of people necessarily get from a parent, from a guardian Mm -hmm. protector, whatever you want to, whoever is in place. Mm -hmm. What is it for you that gave you that mindset with them that said, whatever they come to me, whatever it is that they pick, I'm in on, I'm fine with, and I am going to give them every opportunity to flourish. Well, because that's what you're supposed to do as a parent. What else is there to do? I mean, you and I believe it to be quite simple and, and that easy. Yeah, it's that, it's that. I mean, no, it's that simple. It's not very easy <laughs> because your own bullshit gets in the way. Right. And mine does too. All these things that I'll talk, that we'll talk about today, I just, I butcher them as well. Let, let's just be clear. I butcher them. But the one thing I'm pretty good at is realizing when I've butchered it, moving off of it and fixing it. Like I'm fine with being wrong. I've, I'm, I'm mostly wrong. 
Like, and so it's okay. I'm, I'm really good at being wrong. So once I've just established that for myself, well, then my life is about, uh, I'm very clear on like, th this just comes from me. Right. And, and, and I got real clear on these things for me. And I think it's what helps me do these other things. I know exactly what I need in the world. And I, I'm, I got very clear on that. Um, and this came after a massive breakdown that I had in, in 16, this anxiety and stuff that I had from fighting in my childhood. And you can ask me, you can, we can go on that in a second, but I got very clear on who I was. I got very clear on what I needed. And then after that, I, I got very, I, I repeat these I am statements to myself every single day. Like I wake up, I meditate, I have gratitude. I pray in my own internal way. Like it, it, I don't pray to like Jesus or Allah or anything like, you know, like it's my own internal praying. God, I call it God still. I pray to God. I state my I am statements and then I get to work. But these I am statements, dad, husband, teacher, student, fighter, survivor, six things. They're unbreakable. You can't touch me. You can't touch me on them. They're that you can't make them false and you can't touch me. So once I know that I'm good, I'm just good. And then, so I get what I need out of the world immediately. And then I just go try to give, I try to just like give it out there. Like with the coaching thing with my athletes, I just try to give And man, let me tell you, there's a whole fight team that hates me. There's a whole fight team that hates me and because I butchered it and you and I have talked about it, right? Like I'll own all of it and whether it's my fault or not, I don't really care. But, and, and whether they still hate me or not, it's not on me. I can't, I can't really say whether they do or they don't, but they for sure did when I kicked them out, right? That when I said that, can't walked in that day and they had to leave, they hated me and man. Okay. I, I, I messed up, right? I messed up and, and you know, the real story. So, um, but that's how I see it. Yeah. Okay. Like everything in my life that goes bad is my fault. And everything in my life that goes good is, uh, I, I, it's just, it's just some luck, some timing, uh, and the, the grace of God that my hard work actually pays off. I was going to say, you just yeah. nailed that one. Cause luck is hard work and preparation, but it pays the off. It pays off, right? There's a lady, you know, a mom with five kids whose husband died in, in, in Africa by the, the, by the warring tribes who she works 10 times as hard as I do just for a little bit of food and some water. So her luck, her hard work doesn't really pay off in any way. Right. I'm actually in a situation where mine does. So if this is my situation, right? If this is my situation, how can I then not go out and try to make everyone in my life that wants to be part of Elliot? that wants to do this thing that I do, how can I not try to go make them lucky too? Who does it start with? My kids and my wife, first and foremost. Then who does it trickle down to? My students. So if that's the goal, if that's what I'm saying the goal is, then what Elliot wants out of this doesn't really matter. Now, look, I, I have clear boundaries on it. Like, for example, students. But with right. my kids, they're children, man. There's no boundaries. What's, 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 money, what's my money for? Right. It, I, like it, I Listen, I appreciate the hell out of that approach. Yeah. And you and I are going to continue talking mm -hmm. forever because I'm going to take that morning routine. I know it is available on elliotmarshall.com that I will yeah. go and get that into my life because there will be people that love me that see this that go, dude, go here, this. Yeah. There are people that will hear you mention a team that hates you and want me to drill down on it. Go ahead. You go and ahead. I have spoken about it. I don't want to do it today. Okay. I know we spoke about it fairly recently. Yeah. I will forever respect your readiness and willingness. And I want to continue to have this conversation mm -hmm. about the thing you mentioned, because you showed the, the podcaster and you and the host and you have like, I know you'll ask me about that. Next. Right. So let's go. Bring me to it. Bring the me anxiety. through. Bring me through the anxiety. What happened? Because you said it's right. So 2012, you retired. 2011. So yep. 2011. You're, I retired. We're, we're a couple years into post-career. Mm-hmm second career mm -hmm. the plural yep and doing stuff and it's going well it's going team really is growing well. schools yeah. are growing great things are moving forward what what I never happened? had as much i never had as much money i never had as much uh <laughs> anything right like every all of the material things that that one would look at and say and and measure good life on it's the most i've ever had i never dealt with the devil 
I never danced with the devil. I always beat him down. I always said, no, 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 no. And then he left for a minute. You know, this devil of uh, not being accepted, this devil of this anxiety that, that I can experience and still do to this day. Um, I, I always just ran from him. And I never sat down and looked him in the eye and danced, you know. And then 2016 came and he said, you're going to dance. He said, you're going to dance or you're going to die. So your choice. So we had to dance, you know, and it was nine months, nine months of absolute hell. Panic attack after panic attack uh, up all night. I, I, you know, it started with five nights of no sleep. Uh, and then brought just, on by what? I don't know. Just brought, brought on by some jet lag, homie. Brought on. Like just we're, we're coming right back from that. Right. We're, we're coming back from a Maui vacation. Oh, woe is me. Right. And, and the jet lag that you can experience. Right. Right. And, but, but the timing of it all, you know, I, I, I was like, I'm never going to sleep again. And the next thing you know, I'm on the internet Googling how Michael Jackson died, how Heath Ledger died. And then, you know, oh shit, man, I can't take benzos because I'll get addicted to benzos. And da, 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 da. and then like, I don't know if you've ever had anxiety, but it's like a hook. And oh, I, I have it okay. currently. You experience it. You don't have it. Don't, yes. don't, don't put it to you. Okay? I, I experience. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have brown eyes. I don't have anxiety. <laughs> uh, I have no hair. Uh, so it's like a hook Cho that gets in you, choice right? or a little bit of both life okay. yeah a little bit of both all right and then once it goes what happens you just can't get away from the thought right so like for mine mine all comes around this sleep thing so you wake you know you get up or you know because you didn't sleep but then you get up and you're like okay and like you know 10 o'clock's okay 11 o'clock's okay but as soon as noon hits you're like oh shit the sun's gonna go down soon and then you just dwell on it, dwell on it, dwell on it. You start to dread the night coming and dread the night coming. And you're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep. And then you start trying to prepare to not – you try, you start trying to prepare right. to sleep at, like, right. four. How am I, well, I going to set right. myself What's up to sleep gonna be well? Like? Right? right? I need to sleep well. And, man, that's a, that's a motherfucker. You know, that's a and motherfucker. so you said it was – Nine several months. months nine months but right away look here's another instance of this tremendous luck that i have my doctor is one of my best friends so on a friday night at five o'clock because i was i said five nights of no sleep and that's when that was the that was the fifth, fifth day i called him and he could take care of me right away if you call you know and i don't know maybe you have the same situation but most people don't Right. So if you call your doctor's office on Friday night at 4 30, what happens? Oh, if I call, they're like, we can get you in. I can get you a phone call with them next Thursday. Yeah. I can get you a and phone call. And then if you need to come in, it'll be like 10 more days after that at the most luck. inopportune time right. possible for you. Right. That's not my situation. I, I had sleeping pills, anxiety pills uh, by six. You know, by six. I but it group. still carried on for yeah, it doesn't several go away. months. Once it's... the devil comes to really say hello, you right. ain't going anywhere. You know, so uh, I had this group of great friends that are now, you know, one, the CEO of the company, another CEO of the company. Uh, and they would stay up with me all night. They would stay on the phone with me. I would, I would take the sleeping pills. I'd have a panic attack because I wasn't asleep in five minutes. Because uh, I wasn't injecting it I intravenously, right? So right. Uh, I would right. run downstairs. You mean this time release thing yeah. hasn't worked yet? Yeah. I would run downstairs, have a panic attack, <laughs> call them. And then sometimes it was up all night with me. And sometimes, it, you know, I would fall asleep in the middle of it. Uh, but that lasted every night for a fucking month. And they just rotated. They just rotated who talked to me. And so how did you get to a point? When did you get to a point of okay, I've got this under control. Because as you said, anxiety is a thing that we have that is still present and can mm -hmm. still come up whenever it decides to. Mm -hmm. But I would assume, I, 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 never, I would assume you're sleeping fairly yeah, okay now. I never got to, I never get to a point. I wake up and I work at it every day. That's part of, that's part of the routine. I get good with it right away. I, I say hello to the devil every single day. I talk to God and I talk to the devil every day and i know these are like religious terms right but it kind of they're great metaphors in my opinion they, yeah they crystallize you know? for people yeah. it, it brings it home for people so i talk to god and i talk to the devil and i get real clear with who i am 
So whether I don't sleep or I don't, whether I sleep or don't, I'll still be a dad, a husband, a teacher, a student, a father, right? All, a fighter, all these things, okay? So, uh, and then when the night comes, and this is still my routine every night, bro, I plan on not sleeping. And you just go to bed and do the things that you're supposed to do. And I just plan on we'll, not sleeping. We'll see. I turn on Law and Order after my wife and I are done watching whatever <laughs> show we're watching. And then I keep my eyes open. And then a commercial comes and I notice that I'm like fading. I'm like, oh no, no, open your eyes. And then I allow myself to like close my eyes through during the commercials. And I just plan on not sleeping, dude. Okay, are we talking like original Law and Order? Like original, the OG, OG Law and Order? OG, man. And are yeah. we working through seasons on a streaming platform nah, or are we yeah. just like well, YouTube TV. TNT? Okay. YouTube TV and I have it. I have them all saved so I can go okay. back to season one, you know? I haven't really dove into like the season 21, like the newer ones. Yeah. You know, right. w- like once it went off the air is when I stopped. Right. Um, but yeah, that's how I do it. And that's my plan. And like I just – when, when the anxiety comes, when like I get panic attacks in the middle of the night sometimes, like I'll wake up to a panic attack. Happened, I don't know when it happened last time, a week ago. So then I just got to wake and up. I, what's the process for you? I wake up, I get myself awake, and then I watch television on my phone. And I just have a panic attack. I sit up, I freak the fuck out. Uh, I wonder what, you know, if this is it, yada, yada. Uh, all that stuff. I say, no, this is not it, Elliot. You know what this is. So just breathe and do and watch and watch TV. And then, you know, then I fall asleep again when, when the panic attack subsides. Why law and order? I don't know. Just that's what, it's, what, it's, what, it's what I chose. It's what I chose. Okay. I don't know. Ye- years ago at some point. Whenever it started. Yep. I, there's no yeah. rhyme or reason to it. All right. But I have steps, man. Just like I have steps on how to be a good coach, on how to be a good dad. And I make adjustments on how to, you know, on how to be a good leader and I mess it up and I don't mess it up. And I, I do more, I do way more messing up than I do anything successful. What is it about routine and steps and structure that for you personally, but also for you professionally is so vital and the thing that works for you? It's just copying right? Like what are the, how do the best people do anything is they have routine and structure and steps, right? So when you ask me, uh, like be a good coach, for example, well, I have to study because my shit from last year is outdated, right? Like I, I put an Instagram story up during the fights, like, and, and not to like, uh, not, not to shit on any of the announcers because they all do it. But this idea for when somebody's on your back and they have a body triangle on, of just rolling from side to side to, 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 to like make, you no know, Gordon Ryan and like, whatever, feel however you want about Gordon. I could care less how you feel about him personally, his material, his and John's is the best for no gi grappling. He has a three hour instructional on how to escape the back. And it greatly goes over the technical ways that you can escape a body triangle. So if you're still doing it by this rolling side to side thing and hoping that the person fucks up or the round ends, you are just outdated. And if your coach doesn't know how to do this, if your grappling coach doesn't know how to escape the positions, then the, get a new fucking coach. Like, I don't know what to say. And if your coach doesn't have, and I guess this might toot my own horn a little bit, but look, uh, in 2021, we went to the world championships for jiu-jitsu and no-gi. We took 12 students. And we lost 11 first round matches. Whose fault is that, bro? It's yours. It's mine. It's a hundred percent mine. Right? The game stepped up through COVID. You had all these dorks staying home. <laughs> right? They couldn't go. The game got so much better. Right? <laughs> they just sat at home, instructionals, yeah. Yeah. learned, I can twist uh-huh. this, I can uh-huh. tweak that had their grappling dummies, figured mm-hmm. out different setups. What I, right. And you guys were just drilling. So, look, and- so I had to go like, okay, Elliot, uh, <laughs> don't let that happen again. How could we not let that happen again? You have to give more. You have to get better and give more. Provide more. 2022, 13 students, 13 medals, two world champs. 
So I did it, right? Congratulations. No, nah, they did it. I didn't do shit. They did it, right? Oh, I'm not saying that to you. Yeah. I'm saying that to your to them. Right. So that was a Sunday that it ended, the, the like the final day. Uh, Drew Dober was fighting the next Saturday. So I immediately had to pretty much, I was home for two days and I immediately had to go to Vegas. Well, Donaher, Gordon, and Giancarlo Bodoni, which is my realm, the best guys in my realm, they were in Vegas for a Gordon Ryan super fight. I hit them all up and was like, yo, private lesson, please. Don't care about the cost. I need to get better. So students win all the world. Students win, followed by Elliot getting better. I didn't care about the technique. All that shit's on DVDs. How do you train? Tell, tell me how you're doing it with your athletes to get them better. I can, I'll find the shit on the internet, the actual moves, right? Right. So that's but for the, you. But that's, it, for you, it was the process, mm -hmm. not the actual fundamental. Yeah, not not the not the specifics of the technique. So, but what right. are you doing? So, what are you doing as a coach? Are you st what? Who are you studying? Now, look, that's just in one realm for me. Right. But who are the best coaches in the world? Who are the best coaches in history? Are you studying John Wooden? Because if you're not stud if you're a coach and you're not studying John Wooden, then then you're out of your mind. And you're like, ah, oh, Elliot, he's in the 60s and 70s. No, man. Yeah, sure. He's in the 60s and 70s. He took black kids. He took Lou Alcindor and through his time of in becoming Kareem Abdul Jabbar, which was this major shift in on the ideology. Of, of a black man in America and John Wooden was born in like 1900. So how in the world could he relate to Lou Alcindor and make him play basketball really well and then turn around and re relate to this hippie ass white boy that all he wanted to do was smoke weed and grow his hair out and Bill Walton. How did this guy do that? Right? How did he do that? If you're not paying attention to that dude, your shit's outdated, right? You're, you're, not, you're not doing what's necessary for the coach and the athlete and the student and, and whoever else it is that you're here for. In that regard, who are for you both personally to you and to your success, hmm. but also just in general, the most influential coaches in your life, the people you look at as those John Woodens in line with, with, the Wizard of Westwood. My for... luck started with my parents. So I have the two most amazing parents that anybody could ever have because they love me. And they're the ones who presented all of this opportunity for me. They stayed together, which uh, I, I don't mean to shit on anybody with divorce. I, I, like it's, it's, a, it's a necessary thing if it's necessary, right? But my, my parents stayed together in a two-parent household. Uh, and that's, that's the number one thing right? That's where my luck started. Okay. The karate school that I went to with all of, uh, he was an amazing person for me in my life. Okay. I don't agree with him on many things now and that's okay. Right. Like that, it doesn't right. matter, but time I, and place, time and place, right. That was, that was important. Next came a mall, right? So a mall was, was, a, was a, like, and the timing of a mall and who he is as an individual, he never stunted my growth. He let me go train with Henzo. He made me go train with Henzo. And, and you know, and um, and at the time that was very important for me, right? And then we brought Dwayne in, and Dwayne was a massive important person in my martial arts growth. And now, and then Greg Jackson was a massively important person in my martial arts growth, who I owe so much to. Um, and then there's all these people, you know, like uh I I can't repay Rashad, what Rashad did for me. Uh, and he was never my coach. Right. But, but how he treated me and I couldn't understand right. a shot because I didn't think like this when I was fighting, well, you know, I, I used to have this, this fixed mindset and, and Rashad was always pushing me to, to go beyond that. And I couldn't understand it. And then once I had, you know, this, this breakthrough that I had the spiritual awakening slash mental breakdown of 2016, I can't see how I didn't see it. Like it doesn't fathom me. I, I get why Rashad was so mad at me. You know, and he would right. scream and yell at me and curse at me and kick me out of the training room. Uh, but uh, so, uh, uh, and man, he was a he's a good dude. He is a good dude. He's a good. I've had, dude, I've had the pleasure of of spending I, time and and speaking with him. He is a we're, good dude. We're homies, you know, and uh, and he's he's 
way more famous than I am, right? Like, and you know, right now with the, part of the reason for it, and I know I'm tangenting here, part of the reason I'm doing this basketball thing is it gives me the opportunity to give back to some young African American kids that don't have the opportunities, right? Well, they all come over to my house on the weekends, a lot of them, right? So I had like five kids at my house this weekend, uh, all a little underprivileged, right? That don't necessarily have the things that my kids have. So that's one of the reasons that I'm doing the basketball thing, you know, and, and not just for my kids. Right. And they were like, yo, you know, Rashad. And they were just <laughs> geeked out about it, right? Like geeked out about it because he's a black athlete that in fight, you know? And I was like, yeah. And I FaceTimed him. I was like, yo, man, and he didn't answer. I was like, yo, can you hit me back? I got these kids, you know, like these young black athletes, like they're, they're, they think you're the guy, you know, they, they love you. And man, he hit me back and he was at the fights. We he was couldn't at hear the, him. Yeah, he was yeah. at the event. Yeah, he, they couldn't really hear him, but he just said what's up to him, you know, and it, like he didn't have to do that, right? Like right. No, whatever. No, he could have so just been too busy, which he was. He was busy, right? So anyway, uh, that's that, you know, with Rashad. But as far as for me and now, man, uh, I have, I have this mentor, you know, uh, the guy, an old guy, an older guy named Bryn, uh, who has been ridiculously successful in his life. And I, I, you know, and he, and he, if we don't, we don't talk often, right? Like he just gives me these pointers and, and these ideas and, and connects me with people. And, and I read a lot of books, you know, or um, my wife, I listen to a lot of books, you know? Uh, I, I was going to catch you because yeah. I know I heard it on one of the, one of the shows I listened to of yeah. like, no, I like, can't, I don't like reading, but I'll, I'll listen to them. My wife's the same way. Yeah. My wife commutes half an hour every day to and from. Mm -hmm. And if she picks up the book, she falls asleep in the book. Yep. But if she puts it on, mm -hmm. she can, she can get through it in the course of whatever the drive is. So, you know, uh, David Goggins. Right. Right. Uh, Jocko. And they don't even fucking know me. Right. Right. Uh, Robert Green in some ways. Uh, they, and, you know, uh, try, there's a book called Tribal Leadership, uh, you know, about the five stages of a team. Uh, uh, Michael Rosen, Rosenberg, I think his name is. He wrote this book called Nonviolent Communication. So these are all my these are all my teachers now. I got gotcha. you. You know, and, and I just I don't know, man. I try to stay a student. I try to I've stay a student. I've referenced this show a couple of times. Obviously, as I mentioned, your podcasting is one of the things, the mm -hmm. blueprint with Elliot Marshall, find it on all your streaming platforms. What yeah. led you down that road? The breakdown, the breakdown, because for me, the best way out was in like, because for most of my life, I've been trying to hide this devil that I had. And because like, uh, I, I was ashamed of it. And, when I realized that, oh, wait, wait a minute. Like you on. were, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. You were ashamed of the anxiety, of the fear, anxiety that you feel. And it's yeah. been an ever present thing. Yeah. Since I was eight years old. Okay. Uh, and the fear, like saying that I'm afraid. Yeah. No, understand. You know? And saying that I'm afraid of stupid stuff, man. I'm afraid, like, like, yeah, but it's okay. So uh, I realized that I went to the school one night and I was in the middle of a panic attack. And I just told everyone at the end of the class that I struggle with this. And they were like, it was, it was like all of this weight just got released. And then I was like, wait a minute, God. And then a bunch of people reached out. We're like, Hey man, you know, like me too. And then I was like, Oh, and not in this like woke ass way where it's like, Oh, I'm struggling and I need a safe space. Uh, not, not that right in this real, like, yeah, I'm struggling. I'm going to, I'm going to get through it. You know, I got my, I got my crew. We'll be here for you. And that's, you know, that's what the schools are about, right? You don't ever have to be alone again, right? We're going to teach you martial arts and we're going to teach you, you know, jujitsu and Muay Thai kickboxing, but you don't ever have to be alone again. There, there will always be somebody that you, that, that, that's, that's our thing, you know, is this community, this community of people that are together and we protect that community. So and we protect that community. It's, a, it's an oxymoron. You protect the community by applying pressure to it. So uh, that's what got me down this road of being like, of the sharing. Like, yeah, man, I am incredibly soft. And if you know me, if you really <laughs> know me, you know this. You know I'm soft. Like, you, you know that I am, um, uh, 
that I love deeply, like really, really deeply. Uh, and I love my people deeply. Uh, and that's just who I am. Now, look, there is this hard shell to me as well, right? Like, I'm right. like for sure, a hundred percent. Right. But uh, I love deeply and, and I feel a lot. And I got really good at realizing that my feelings are on me and I'm the one who has to, can, has to be in charge of them by knowing what my needs are. And, uh, and this is the message that I share that you can, uh, you can have all of these problems. You can have all of this uh, issues and, and whatever, but you can still be tough. I'm the toughest pussy any of you know, but I, but I am one. I, I am soft as could be. All right. So let's switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the cooking skills. Talk to me about oh, fuck yeah, the Traeger go. grills. Talk to me about... Like what's right, let's the, talk, let's go to the what, origin, right? Okay. What's, let's start. Let, no, let's start with what's, okay. what's the best dish. What's the best dish in the Elliot Marshall repertoire? No, you want to get invited for Christmas dinner. Okay. Give it to me. Cause like now, now that I know, and I knew this obviously before we sat down, mm -hmm. but now that I'm, now that I, you say that and I'm processing black father, Jewish mother can burn a little bit. Like this is a spread that I I very much want the invite. But you look it, like uh, just like everything in life, it's the basics. If you can do the basics, okay. If you like, there's nothing fancy to it. Chris is okay, but, okay, but I'm thinking about amazing basics. Like I, yeah, I'm gonna I mean, tell you what's going through my head. I'm thinking yeah. there's a mac and cheese that's probably pretty. You pretty know good. there's a fucking mac and cheese, my dog. Let's go. Yes, you I got know the there's basics. cornbread that's amazing. You know there's cornbread that's amazing. You know, I know there's that whatever I know that whatever the, the whatever the protein is 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 sharp. Whether you're going ham or prime turkey. rib, yeah, okay. it's prime rib on Christmas. Okay, all right, you know, it's prime rib on Christmas. Okay, uh, so it's mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, prime rib. I personally like this green bean thing that I make. Okay, uh, and then uh, the gravy. That's it. All right. Yeah, I want in. Yeah, and come. I'm I'm gonna come through Colorado one yeah. of these days. Yeah, I mean, look, like, it's 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 the base. Just happens to be Christmas. Yeah, it just happens to be Christmas. I right? was I was driving through your neighborhood. Let's go. Time zone away. Yeah, across the border. Let's go. But uh, that's what has to like. So you have to be able to cook a good steak, and if you can't cook a good steak, uh, then then you're kind of just shit out of luck. Okay, uh, give pe give the people the keys to cooking a good steak. Okay, now. All of it is time dependent, okay? I would prefer, really prefer, when we're going to talk about Christmas dinner, okay, okay. and this prime rib that we're going to make, I would prefer for you to have 24 hours ahead of time so that you can wet rub the meat with mustard, Worcestershire, and water. Put that on there, okay? Now, you have to cut the bones off. Make sense? Rub it all over. Tie, rub it all over the bones too and then tie the bones back on after seasoning okay so wet okay. rub season everything salt uh, i personally like this thing called the santa maria rub from uh from whole foods and also uh i i can't remember my, my this this dude on the internet uh he sent me a, this rub i i can't say this dude on the internet but that's not fair right it, it's so good, man. <laughs> like it's so good. I mean, I mean, you could, but he's gonna be the, right. He's gonna he if somehow this gets to him, he's gonna be like, my guy, seriously? Yeah, You're giving me my man on the internet. Strong arm bar and grill. Okay, okay. strong arm bar and grill. His uh, his just basic all purpose rub is ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Okay, and and he sent it to me. So that. Tie the bones back on with a uh, cooking string. Wrap it in plastic wrap in the fridge overnight, minimum 10 hours. Okay? Two hours pre-cook. You take it out and let it come to room temperature. You put it in the Traeger or whatever smoker you have. Okay? At 225 degrees if you have a Traeger because that way you can use the super smoke function. If not, 250 is fine until it gets to an internal temperature of about 120, okay? Once it hits the internal temperature of 120, you get a grill piping fucking hot, like piping fucking hot. 
you untie it so that now what you're going to actually be serving is prime rib and beef backbone ribs. Okay. And you sear them both on all sides. Once seared on all sides, you then take it, you can put it back in plastic. Okay. Or wrap it in not tin foil because it will cook in butcher paper and put it in a cooler for minimum one hour to rest. And then where people really fuck up when they serve prime rib is they cut it all and then put it on a platter and then serve prime rib and brisket and big hunks of meat like this can't be served like that. You have to cut and serve. So you as the cook have to have people come to you, you cut it on the plate, you cut, put it on the plate. That's the star. And the mac and cheese is the star, dude. But if you do the mac and cheese, right, it's really simple. I don't even make a roux. I don't, I don't do a roux on my mac and cheese. It's fucked up. I literally just take heavy cream, put it in a pot. Sharp cheddar, medium cheddar, Vermont white cheddar. Melt it with salt and pepper. Okay. A little bit of Parmesan at the end, maybe just for a little, little tang. A little, little, little salty, little, yep. A little, little salt. Cook the noodles to about three quarters of the way done, but not all the way done. Drain them. Oven's at 375. Put the, the sauce that you just made, mix it all up so it's real creamy, extra liquid. You got to go extra liquid is the key. Okay. And then you put more cheese on top of it, the cheese that you put in. You put that on top of it so it crisps. You got to set the mac and cheese on a tray because it's going to over pour. And then like if you don't do that, your oven will be destroyed and it will smoke, right? It will start to like, you know, which sucks because then it tastes weird. And then so you cook it until it's crispy on top. Okay, at 375, when it's done, you take it out. You gotta let it rest for a minimum two minutes. And we good. I appreciate these lessons. I appreciate the sharing of this knowledge. These things are important. This is look, this, these are important. Fighting in food is how I do it. That's how I connect with people. I teach them how to it's, fight. It's two of I the cook. things I like. It's two of the things I like best. It's why we get that's along. How, yeah, uh, that's it, you know? That's it. So Okay, I know one other thing that we both enjoy is coffee. Go ahead. I need to yes. know about the the constant. So your friend, my friend, Sean Madden. I see mm -hmm. the constant mm -hmm. Sean Madden and Starbucks <laughs> talk. So I need the scoop. I need the scoop. You want the, okay. Uh, I know you've got I a call. heart out. So if it's going to take right. more than beyond the heart no, out, no, no, no. give me the abridgment. Look, look. Let, let's be clear. I, I treat coffee like I treat sex. Okay. Um, if it's no coffee or not so good coffee, then we're doing not so good coffee, Starbucks. Okay. But okay. it's like that with sex too, right? Like if it's no sex or some mediocre sex, then we're doing it right. Like we're, we're definitely okay. doing, we don't ever go to the bad, right? Like okay. you don't right. go for the $2 hooker on the corner in Vegas. Okay you don't get gas station coffee. Let's just be clear on this. Okay. <laughs> so let's start there. All right. So I no 7-Eleven. No, no, no. Yes. Right. Right. Whatever None it is in, in Colorado, Bucky's or circle, uh, circle, circle K. K come and yeah. go. Yeah. None okay. of that. All okay. Right. So none of that. Other than that, good coffee is not far away. Okay. It just takes a little work. It just takes a little work. I think Starbucks, it's like, so the reason the Starbucks thing is, it's, this is the story. I was going to Australia with Cody Donovan for his first UFC fight. You fly over the night, right? It's this long ass flight. You land in Auckland, New Zealand. And I, you know, we have a layover and I go get a cup of coffee at the, whatever, the coffee joint in the airport, which I didn't think was going to be that good. I was looking for a Starbucks. They didn't have one. Uh, and I was like, man, this is just. I was like, wait, I'm going to go get another cup. So I go get another cup. And I'm like, man, this is like, we don't have coffee like this in America. And then I was like, no, Elliot, hold on. You only go to Starbucks. <laughs> right. And Starbucks okay. is the McDonald's of coffee. Right? Like if you judged every cheeseburger based on a the McDonald's, McDonald's cheeseburger, cheeseburger, then you're like, whatever cheeseburger is a cheeseburger. Which has some there. utility, as you said, right. to, the, right. to the comparison of zero or – not, right. great. not great. I'll take the not yeah. great rather right. not having a cheeseburger. Right. So that's when I was like, 
okay, when I go back, I'm going to find good coffee places. And then, you know, we made this video of me, me in a mall. We were at the world championships. Uh, and there's a video out there on, I think it's on my YouTube of us like going to different coffee places because like the, the, the first two weren't good enough. Uh, and yeah. And, and now like, uh, when I travel. And, and so is, is Sean a Starbucks guy? No, Sean's like, not a Starbucks guy. Sean's, yeah, just, just, Sean's just the yeah. target. Okay. And, but like, look, I give, if I'm not giving you shit, you better be nervous. Okay. Right. Because that okay. means I might not like you. Okay. So when you walk in Denver with a Starbucks, like when my employees walk in down Starbucks, literally the, a really good coffee spot is okay. A Starbucks is like across the street, but it's drive through. So it's a pain in the ass. Right. Right. Like on a busy road. If you spent five more minutes, five more minutes, you could go the get amount really of time you would have been in the drive yeah, in line. There is no reason to get fucking Starbucks when going to the school, man. Like no reason. Like it's, it's only a lack of effort or not caring. So, so if you, God forbid you come in with Starbucks, you're going to hear me talk to you about it. All right. So I'm now going to wait and make sure that I get some shit talk along the way here in the next few, you know, things I post. No, I or, opened up to you about something. something very personal to me. That's true. That right? is true. I opened up to you about something very personal because I trusted you and, and, uh, I, yeah. I will say here, because I don't think I said it previously, those are the things that mean the most to me. I've had these conversations with people in the past of like, they ask me what are the important things they need to know, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I say is, listen, if somebody gives you something and it's in confidence and it's off the record, or you even know that they haven't said, hey, we need to keep this off the record, but it is something that is private to them is important to them you hang on to that because that's how you build relationships that's how you build trust that's how i know i can come to you and be like shit last minute can i get you for coach conversations and your yeah. response is yeah my guy google calendar that's how look let's, let's just go yeah as long as you send to my google calendar because i fucked up once <laughs> i forgot about it it's all uh, right we get it organized we're yeah. listen Routine structure. Exactly. We Look, have how the you routine, know you can we come have to the structure more than that. Right? It's how you know. I hope you know that if you ever really needed something, you could be like, yo, Elliot, I really need something. And 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 I would do my best. And I literally my wife and I just had this conversation. I uh I have this amazing friend. You know, I have this amazing friend, and my wife is in the the flooring. Yeah, you know, she's an interior designer, right? So she always needs flooring and stuff, stuff like this. And this company just offered her a better deal than what he can offer her. And, uh, and, and you, you always have to think about it, right? Yep. But I was like, babe, it's, it's just not worth it. Like, it's not worth it. Pay more. Pay more because of who it is and what that person stands right. for. Right. And what they've, what they've done for you in your life. Now, because I hate this argument. I hate this argument of like, if, if you're broke, for example... Okay. And like no money can't eat. And I come and I give you five grand and that gets you through for a couple months. And then in that couple months, you start taking off and all of a sudden you become the El Hawani of the MA industry. Right. Let's just say, you know, crushing the game. And then later on down the road, you stab me in the back, right? You stab me in the back and you go, and I'm like, dude, and you go, here's the five grand back because you have millions now, right? Well, yeah, no shit, but that's not equal. That's not equal because the five grand at the time, right? right. The five grand at the time when you had nothing, you couldn't pay that back, right? You couldn't pay that back. So now that you have everything and you're like, oh, this doesn't work for me anymore and I could get it, mm, that's not real loyalty. Everyone's right. loyal when it's convenient, you know? Everyone's loyal when it's convenient. But the second it becomes inconvenient, you stop being loyal. That's not loyalty. Loyalty happens when it's inconvenient. When it's not what's necessarily best for you. And that's just how I see it, right? So, uh, and there's only one way to figure it out. Like, you know, like I said, I, I told you a very personal story. If that shit ends up all over the internet, <laughs> then I, I know where it came from. Yeah. 
There's, right? there's only one source for that. Yeah, <laughs> there's only one source for that one, homie. You that, know? Is, so, that is me breaking your confidence, which isn't right. a thing that is going to happen. And if it does, I'll recover. It's not like I won't recover. Oh, right? for sure. But it will also mean you know where we stand I'll and, know where and who is. I am. Yep. And we won't have conversations anymore. And we will not have conversations anymore. I'll, I'll say hello to you. Just won't have yeah. right? right? And that, that for me... Uh, it's just kind of how I go about my life. Like, like with my business partner, I'm all right, man. He gave me things at a time in my life that I couldn't pay for. So, you know, uh, what, right. what are you, what are you going to do? Right. 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 Like, what are you going to do? And sure. Look, we fight and yada, yada. Like I'm married to him. Like I'm married to my wife. And, and so, and we have to like work through, work through disagreements and, and all of this stuff. But as far as like, uh, the loyalty aspect, he would have to violate values. Right. 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 He would have to violate. It values. would have to be such a transgression. That... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it would have to be a big one. Yeah. It would have to be a big one, like a really, really big one. Yeah. Uh, so and that's just how I see it. And, and that's because he gave me something at a time when I couldn't pay for it. And there's no other way that I was going to get this. So coming, you know, coming back using that same example of being like, oh, here, what, what did you give me? You gave me five grand worth of lessons, three grand. Here, here's the three grand. No, it's right. not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. You know, and, I, this, and this is where people mess this whole, I'm a loyal dude. No, you're not. Most people aren't loyal. You're convenient. You're convenient. not loyal. loyal. Right. You can right. You're but you're not loyal. I know you've got to go, so I will get you out of here with one that I'm I'm borrowing okay. from the blueprint. Okay. Who made you agree to do this? Mm, hey. <laughs> what made me agree to do it? I love talking to people. Because you said because you said yes, like right yeah. away. Yeah. I said we gotta get you on the show. We were talking about a guest you've had on, a guest that I'm working to have on, Laura mm -hmm. Sanko, who mm -hmm. I've spoken to a bunch, and you were like, I love Laura. She's great. I was like, yep, trying to get her on my show, which means I also have to get you on the show. And you were like, let's do it. I was like, Monday. And you were like, yeah, of course. Send me the, send me the calendar. So let's go a couple of reasons. <laughs> okay. the calendar. Like, make sure it's on my calendar. Make sure it's on my uh, calendar. Let's go a couple of reasons. Okay. Okay. I love talking. I'm in the speaking industry. So therefore I have to get better at my craft. Right. Two. So many people have come on my show that had no reason to come on my show. Like I, I can't, I can't, my show can't really help anybody's platform. Uh, I'm not Would you tell them at the end of every show. Yeah. When I want to make when sure you ask them yeah. this question. Yeah, this isn't going to help that, you. Yes. This ain't, you're not becoming famous here. Mm -hmm. Why'd you do it? I want to, and, and, and it, a lot of it comes down to this, you know, what I explain, what most people's answer is for me is this idea of an ROI of like, I need something back. You don't know when you get something. First of all, you don't know you, we have no clue Spence, what, what our relationship will lead to and the connections that it might make. Maybe your podcast with Laura Sanko will blow you up. And if I'm the one who makes the intro, then there we go. Right. And that did nothing for me. Right. But it sent you off to the stratosphere, let's say. Okay. So you have no clue what the ROI will be. But how about you and I just have a good time? How about in a moment, if I can say yes, then I do it. Because when you get an email about this book that you wrote, that you, the one behind me, that cost you 25 grand to write. And you're like, damn, how am I going to see an ROI on this? And an email comes through that says, I was going to kill myself. And then I read your book. Well, I think that just became done. Right? I, I, uh, okay. Great. Paid. Paid back. Right. Right? And if somebody hears this and becomes a martial artist and that makes their life, if some, somebody hears this and goes, oh, damn, that guy struggles and he's really open about it. What, what if I maybe get a therapist and I talk to a doctor, you know?
So I had that piece, right? Like I, I, I see my therapist every week. I'm missing her this week because she's on vacation. But every week I see my therapist. And if that leads to somebody doing better in their life, and if my I am statements, if somebody hears that and can connect to it, if with the meditation practice or if this or if that, right? Because there's all these people that I said that I connect to, Goggins, who's never met me, uh, Jocko, who's never met me, uh, Brene Brown, who's never met me. Uh, and and they, they really help me, right? Like they, they really, really help me in my life. And there's this lady, the mindfulness movement on, on YouTube. Uh, I list, that's the meditation. I listen to one of hers every single day, right? She's never fucking met me, <laughs> you know, but she's right. one of my teachers. Right. So if I can repay that in any way, in any way, and never even know about it, I don't even need to know about it. Well, then my job's done and it starts with my kids then it, you know, I can't, I don't really do that with my wife, but there's a, you know, there's that. And then it goes to my students and not just my athletes that, you know, like Drew and Miranda and all these jujitsu athletes. I feel the same way about this class that I'm going to go teach from five till six and then six 30 till seven 30 tomorrow, man, I won't miss. I don't miss that for a day. Like if, if, if it's my birthday, not missing don't, If I'm out of town, then I'm missing, but I never take a night off. I never take a night off because I'm not feeling it. Cause if I'm not feeling it, I got to get myself to be feeling it. Because it's my privilege that any single one human being would spend any amount of time with me. Because who the fuck am I? So that you asked me to answer your question in this really long way, that you asked me to come hang out for an hour. Can we find a time to do it? Well, then the answer becomes yes. Well, I greatly appreciate it because all those things are, are pieces of the reasons I want to do this. It's also too get people the opportunity to know more about you and whoever sits on that opposite side of the screen of me. We close as always, let the people know where to find out more about you, to follow you, to get gospel of fire, to get the blueprint, to get the tutorials, to get the morning routine, give them all the spots. So look, uh, my Instagram at fire marshall 205. I try to be very uh, responsive on there. Uh, I don't really respond on Twitter or Facebook where, you know, so uh, so that is where you can, you know, converse with me a little bit. Uh, and then elliotmarshall.com. Everything is on elliotmarshall.com. I've got some cool stuff coming out. I'm, I'm trying to uh, do this thing called be a badass, right? Because everybody who ever asks anything like to come into my world, they want to be a badass fighting, right? Uh, running a school. They want to run a badass school. They want to, you know, live a more badass life and stuff. So trying to do, you know, do this thing. I have some, I do these, I do some repeats and stuff. So everything is on elliotmarshall.com. If, uh, what I would really love is to get some speaking gigs, you know? So, uh, that contact is also on elliotmarshall.com. You can submit, I really love the talk. So if any of this resonated with you, I would love to come talk to your company, your school, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm going to go work out and then I don't know, see what everybody wants for dinner. Well, I appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much. For Elliot, I'm Spencer. This has been a conversation with. We'll see you next week.